So uh, LXC on, on Android, uh, I don't actually have any sites for that one. It's mostly showing your stuff. Um, so as part of my work at Canonical, I'm working on the Ubuntu phone. Um, and we actually had two phone-related products. Um, the first one that some people heard of a, a while ago uh, was Ubuntu for Android. Um, so in that case, we basically have a standard Ubuntu uh, a standard Android phone um, on which we have Alexi running, and we boot a full Ubuntu desktop system in that Alexi container that has access to the HDMI port, and basically you dock your phone and you get a full Ubuntu system showing up on an external monitor. Um, to make that work, I had to port Alexi to Bionic, which took slightly longer than I expected. Uh, I think it took me around two months to actually get everything done, um, because it turns out that Bionic is a pretty limited Libc. Um, it just turns out that it's mostly BSD-based and not so much GNU-based, so you're missing a lot of functions, or functions are different, and you need to write wrappers <laughs> and a lot of stuff around that. Um, but at some point, I actually managed to get that thing to build, um, which was in Definitely better than what we used to do before that, which was essentially building that thing statically against Libsy. Um, so we actually got uh, Alexi binaries that were working fine on Android. Um, that's what that project has then been using uh, from that point on to make sure that the Ubuntu system doesn't really see Android. We're also using um, extra mount namespaces um, even before starting Alexi so that Android can't possibly notice Alexi running. Um, because apparently some versions of Android get a bit freaked out uh, when they see extra mount points showing up at some places. It's, it, it was messing with some um, paid apps, I think, uh, that were using loop devices or something, and they, they got confused. So um, we had to work around that a bit. Um, the other trick that anyone has to be aware of if they try to get containers working on Android is Android basically boots, the Android system is basically an init RD. Uh, it's a RAM file system on which then a bunch of partitions are mounted. Um, the problem with that is uh, we couldn't pivot root to uh, something that's based on a RAM file system. So we had to do weird tricks, um, basically recreating a fake, um, fake file system structure, true routing to that, creating a new mount namespace, clearing up the entries we didn't want, then start LXE, then it could actually pivot root and start. Um, in the end, it ends up being like a 59 song shell script, but I think it took us like a week to figure out. Uh, but yeah, we, we, nowadays if you want, uh, you can easily build LXE on Android. You can start your containers on it. It's all fun and it works great. Um, I think there's absolutely no chance of ever getting LXE into the App Store um, because our build process doesn't quite work the way they usually do for uh, Android apps, and it's not really an app. Uh, it's a bunch of C binaries that we need to run as root. Um, that, and you also need uh, the right options in the kernel. Um, so for my phone, I just rebuilt the kernel. Uh, I guess most people have to do that. I'm not sure whether any existing device on the market actually comes with all the namespaces and C groups enabled. So that's basically uh, porting um, Alexion Android. Then the other project I switched to is the Ubuntu phone. Um, the Ubuntu phone works the other way around. Uh, we basically take uh, standard hardware kind of devices, uh, currently the Nexus products. We boot them directly to Ubuntu, um, and then to run all of the binary blobs, um, GSM and all that stuff, we start a container that runs only the bits we need from Android. And in that container, we run yeah, the, those binary blobs, and we've got uh, libibris, which is a library that lets you um, integrate code, uh, Bionic code and glibc code that we use then for communication between the two operating systems. Um, that makes things a lot simpler for us because we don't need to get all the binary blobs rebuilt uh, against glibc, and we don't need them to go through recertification uh, for use on phones because we essentially use the original binaries that were designed to work on Android, and we run the same version of Android on that phone. Everything is good. Um, obviously, that means that the Ubuntu kernel on those devices also includes the um, Android patches, 
So we've got DevBinder and all that stuff. Um, did you actually have a neat challenge there? Um, yeah, w w one thing basically, um, Android tends to communicate through the loopback device quite a bit, uh, so we couldn't use a separate network namespace um, for those containers. Um, so we basically have the container share network namespace. We also um, don't drop much capabilities of if any at all, um, because that container is also the one that does uh, firmware initialization. Um, so we essentially need the Android container to be able to load modules and load firmware directly into the kernel. Um, but yeah, besides that, it just works. Um, I'm actually going to um, show you all that stuff um, works. I've got, um, what did I, if I can find my bag. Uh, there, yes. Okay. So, first up would be um, simply a Motorola Atrix running stock Android, um, but with the right kernel on it and a bunch of extra binaries. Um, Okay, so then I need to become root there. And let's see if I can get there without actually looking at the screen. <laughs> um, right. Um, is the screen cut or something? Or can you Yes. Okay, let me see. Um, so I can do run LXC, uh, oh, what's going on there? Hold on a sec. <sighs> hmm, apparently my uh, ADB shell decides to repeat everything I type now, but whatever. So I do run LXC, then LXC dash start dash n and Lucid. And you get a standard Ubuntu container running on Android. Um, you notice it's a pretty old Ubuntu container. It's uh, Ubuntu 10.04. Um, that's because there is a weird kernel bug somewhere on that device. Well, if I start, try to run anything slightly more recent than that, it just takes faults all over the place. Um, but is it's good enough to test LXE and um, I can log into, and I think I'm, yeah, it's the same uh, network namespace as Android itself, so if my phone was connected to wireless, we could install packages and have fun, it, it would just work. Um, as I said, it currently takes um, some shell scripts to try and get that stuff running properly. I need to test it on a few more uh, Android phones, see if my script is generic enough that it should work everywhere, and then my plan is just to um, push that to some Git branch, maybe even in LXE's Git branch itself, so that people can easily reproduce that setup. Um, because I think I got, since about Git told people that I pushed some bionic fixes, I got a dozen people emailing me about how to run uh, LXE directly on Android. So there's definitely some interest for that. Now, let me just swap devices and move that to uh, Nexus 4. Um, that's running Ubuntu, the Ubuntu phone. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, font size might be a bit of an issue. Let's see. Mm. Right. 
Yeah, you probably won't see much, but you don't really read to read either, so that should be fine. Um, so that's a PS output. Uh, here you'll see that we start, uh, that's the Ubuntu session with all of our binaries. But if you go up a bit, then you see that stuff here. And that's Android uh, 4.2 running in an LXE container on the device. And then um, the Ubuntu processes, like we've got net, a network manager patch that lets it talk to Ophono, then we've got an Ophono patch that lets it talk to RealD, which is the uh, telephony daemon that runs inside that uh, Android container. So that way you can just connect to 3G and it goes all the way through and into that container and you get 3G working. Um, similarly, um, it's, you can do a Lexi list and eventually it might actually return. Uh, I don't, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, um, <laughs> okay, I need to fix that. <laughs> um, my guess there is, uh, so, so one thing we do with the Ubuntu phone is that the old system is read-only. <coughs> so, and that includes uh, slash var, and I'm guessing something in Alexi still tries to write stuff. Well, we need to fix that. Um, I thought I, I thought I actually got all of those, but apparently not. So yeah, I need to fix that. Um, but it's um, it's standard uh, LXC. That's the release um, um, we made last week. So we basically use LXC on every single Ubuntu phone now, uh, which is not a whole lot, but maybe at some point it, it will be a lot of phones. And that's kind of nice having everyone use LXC in their pocket. Especially as it's full-fledged LXC, I could do LXC create dash T Oracle or Fedora or whatever and then run an extra Fedora <laughs> container and Oracle container directly on my phone. And so uh, that's it for um, Android containers. Do we have any question? Uh, what would be the use case for that? I mean, what are you aiming for? Um, for which of the two? For running Ubuntu, uh, for running a container on Android, or running Android in a container? For running containers on Android. Yeah. For running containers on Android, it's mostly for fun. <laughs> um, and this is what I <laughs> thought. Initially, it was because of the Ubuntu for Android project where we want to have an Android phone that you can dock. Oh. And when you dock, you get an Ubuntu desktop yeah. externally. Okay. Um, there, there might be some other use cases for that, like someone developing a media center. or Someone could possibly make a container that has XBMC, and when you plug an HDMI cable on your phone, you get XBMC on your TV. Mm -hmm. um, that's perfectly possible. And Using LXC makes it much nicer for you because you don't need to go through the pain of dealing with Bionic. You can right, just right. create a container that has a standard libc and all the other things and just use that. Um, <laughs> the other case, uh, the other way around, which is uh, running Android on, uh, on LXC um, is pretty useful because some companies are now working on getting multiple versions of Android on the same device that they can swap, from, uh, swap between. And Ubuntu uses it as basically a way of running all of the um, hardware binaries in their original environment and on another system. Any other question? Okay.